What's up YouTube? Today I've got a short video about uh, Starlink networking and using your own router. So here's my PoE injector for the Starlink system and it's right beside the Enterprise with a very droopy nacelle due to a bad glue fix. Um, let's take a look at the power consumption right away because that's actually been kind of a, a, hot, uh, a hot question here. So keep in mind this is not running the Starlink provided router, it's just running the, uh, the Starlink uh, dish. And you can see that's actually quite a bit of power consumption, about 94 watts. It seems to fluctuate quite a bit as well actually. So let's just say an average of about 100 watts because I've seen it about down to 80, I've seen it up to about 110. We've got this white cable going down and it is plugged in to my uh, router here, which is a server running PFSense. And this is uh, over here, this is my main internet connection coming in, the fiber line from my ISP. And then this is just a 10 gig uplink into my main network switch here. But basically what I've done is I've set up the um, Starlink uh, as a secondary internet connection and I've assigned my guest Wi-Fi network to use only the Starlink connection. So I can, you know, test it anytime I want just by switching Wi-Fi networks. I've also assigned a VLAN port on my little network switch by my desk um, to that same network. So I can literally unplug my desktop from this port and plug it into this one and then it'll fully be on the Starlink system. So we're gonna do a little experiment before we go any further. We're gonna see if the white side of this is just standard PoE. So we've got this ubiquity, uh, what's this, the, the Flex Mini uh, switch here, which is PoE powered, and we're gonna go PoE in, see what happens. A whole lot of nothing so far. We've got a blinking light on the uh, injector side. You know what, let's just try a different ethernet cable just, just for fun, although I don't think it'll change anything. Yeah, same thing. Well, I'm not surprised. We've got a IP phone. So we're just gonna plug this guy in. Plugging it into the network. Oh, look at that. It's turning on. It appears that this is actually, uh, must be some sort of standard PoE. However, it seems to be very picky about how much power it puts out, so Maybe it's just, uh, I mean, it, the camera didn't need PoE plus and uh, really the switch shouldn't either. So I'm not entirely sure, but this phone actually started up without uh, just running off of the Starlink PoE injector. So just for fun, we're gonna plug this, the uh, phone into the secondary port and see what happens. No joy, but we'll plug it back into the primary port again. And we got power. So the primary port must just use 802.1 um, AF. I think that's what it is. I'll put it on screen if I'm saying it wrong. Um, but uh, the secondary port, I believe, I mean, 1.6 amps times two, that's gotta be proprietary to Starlink based on what I've, uh, based on what I've noticed online as well. But um, I also, uh, I could be wrong. So if you uh, know something I don't, please comment and, uh, We'll talk about it. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna talk about is NAT. So you don't get a public IP version four with Starlink. Basically, Starlink uses what's called CG NAT, which is carrier grade NAT. Here's a great little uh, diagram from A10 Network kind of illustrating what CG NAT is. So we've got our internet with a public IP version four address. Then there's the CG NAT, and then you've got your private IP version four network. If we come down here, there's another little diagram here that kind of illustrates it more. So if you have Starlink, you'll already notice your IP starts with 100, and that's uh, a standard CG NAT IP range. And then you got down out here, the customers with their internal networks, which can be whatever they want. What happens is you end up with a private, private, public network. So that's where you're gonna see your private NAT within your house, your private NAT, I guess, within Starlink itself, and then you've got your public internet. So that's a big issue for people that wanna use UPnP and other services to open ports or just opening ports manually. It basically means it's not gonna work. You're gonna end up with a strict NAT type. 
So for certain games, um, or if you know you want to run a server, a web server at home, or a file server or something, there's going to be a lot of problems with that. Now there are ways around that um, via VPN. There's a lot of VPN services out there that you can subscribe to that will give you a static public IP, but then you're routing your whole internet connection through the VPN. At the moment, I don't know how reliable that'll be because um, if we look here, Starlink, it, it is pretty stable, but I definitely get some packet loss quite frequently right now. And because of that fact, it's probably gonna kill the VPN tunnel and have to reconnect every time it kind of drops out. So in the future, uh, I might give that a test and see actually how it works. I will be doing some testing on games in a future video. For now, we're just gonna talk about networking. So on my screen capture, I'm gonna tell you right now, these IPs are not my actual public IPs. They're just the routers, so you don't have to tell me I'm exposing things. This technically is a, an IP, but again, it doesn't really matter because that's VPN stuff. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is getting your stats page working. Now these instructions are specific to PFSense. I did try the static route method as someone actually commented on my the last video I made, uh, bringing Starlink into the mountains. Couldn't really get that to work. Then I found a Reddit post that actually had some more specific instructions. So we followed those and uh, here you go. Here's my statistics. It actually worked. And uh, you can also do things like, um, you know, stow it, which is really important for me because I've been taking it on the road quite a bit, testing it in different areas. And without this option, it's kind of hard to get the dish to go flat. So we can go, can go into statistics and you'll see there's the uh, kind of the uptime or issues I've been having. Now, I've noticed a lot of them say obstructed, so it might actually be partially where I have it. So let's uh, dive into this. The very first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna assign a virtual IP. So if you notice in this page, it's 192.168.100.1 is the IP of the Starlink dish. But, and without the, the setup in your router, it's just gonna be when you're sending traffic, it's just gonna you know go right past the dish and really not know where it's supposed to go. So we're gonna create a virtual IP on PFSense and we're gonna assign it to whatever interface you have Starlink on. So I've got a whole bunch of networks, so chances are you might just be connecting it to WAN, but if you have a secondary, if you have multiple internet connections, you are probably gonna end up with a something named whatever you want to name it, but I named it Starlink. And then there's your, your internal address. So this is the address that PFSense will be routing information through in order to get to the 100.1 IP. So that's gonna be under your NAT and your outbound rules. Uh, to get to there, I skipped port forwarding, so I wasn't gonna to reveal too much information. You hit NAT and then you're gonna click outbound. You'll have to enable hybrid or manual. Uh, it will not work in automatic mode. We're just gonna talk about my main network, which is the first three. So these two rules, um, rule number two and rule number three in this list, these are just normal rules so that we can access the internet through Starlink. On top, this is the rule we need to access the interface. So it's quite simple, you make sure that it's, you have your interface selected. So for me it's Starlink, for you it might be WAN, depending on what your setup is. And uh, we did IP version four, any protocol, and then we're, our source network, this is your internal network. So I've got some weird ranges. Yours is probably like 192.168.1.1 or, or 1.0, I guess. And then uh, slash 24, which is your subnet mask. Um, slash 24 will make it so any IP in your, your standard range will work uh, to access the router. And then we're gonna allow it to go to the 192.168.100.0 network. That's all there is here. And then down here for a translation, this defaults to interface address. We're gonna actually use the virtual IP we set up. Then we're gonna hit save and apply. So that's what this looks like. And then you can apply your changes. Obviously I've already done it, so it'll already work. For me, I also had to go ahead and make some additional rules. So I'm not sure if this is necessary on all networks, uh, but for me, I had to do this to make it work. And I basically had to make a very simple rule that would allow, would pass traffic, interface LAN, so my name network, main network, and then the address family is IP version four, any protocol, the source, any, and then the destination is the 192.168.100.0 network. And basically those two, those three things we did are gonna make it so that you can access your page, your statistics page. It also works with the app. The only thing you lose is the latency section, but you'll get a lot of useful information here. Now I have read that sometimes this web interface gets disabled and you only can use the app. 
the app does work in this configuration. So I'm not guaranteeing you're gonna, you're gonna have this working. I would suggest testing with the app first so you're not frustrated if this is blocked for whatever reason. Now, I, that's not confirmed information. I just read it on Reddit and it was just one user who said that sometimes or when you set up the, the system with the app, it'll disable this, which I don't know if that's actually correct or not. But in case you're having frustrations, that might be it. I don't know. So if we go into our interfaces and WAN, or well, in my case, interfaces Starlink, um, you're gonna see something down here called advanced DHCP configuration. And what I've done is I've added reject leases from 192.168.100.1. And the reason for this is, is that before Starlink gets connected, it spits out a 192.168.100. blank whatever IP. And uh, PFSense seems to get stuck on that IP because it doesn't know to ask for a renewal once Starlink connects. So the reason I say to turn this off or remove this if you're having issues is because if let's say your satellite dish or your Starlink dish cannot connect, it's gonna spit out an IP in this range and if your uh, router ignores it, you're gonna have no way of logging into the stats page to see what's going on. All right, one other thing I'm gonna cover, if you're using PFSense and you like the gateway monitoring tool here, you will notice right away it just says down and that's because Usually what PFSense does is it'll try to ping an IP on the route to, well, the internet basically. And in the case of Starlink, that IP does not respond to ping. So I just did, uh, if we go into routing, we go into our Starlink gateway, and we're just gonna change the monitor IP. I went with 1.1.1.1 because that is Cloudflare's DNS server and with my fiber, I get a really good ping to that. So it's a very good comparison of what Starlink is doing and what my main router is doing. And that way you'll actually get proper reporting and a realistic look at what is happening with the Starlink connection. So what I've also read online is if you have like a standard router and you have the ability to do static routes, you should be able to make this work as well. I might test it one day and uh, make a little video on it. But um, for now, I don't have a, a standard router that has static routes you know, available and easy to get to. So hopefully this does answer your questions. The bottom line is it's very possible to access this, unlike my first experiment when I was in the mountains and I just tried to do it without any sort of extra configuration. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'll continue to make interesting Starlink videos among uh, my other networking videos around the house. And uh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.